She's been, her name's alongside Sue Bird for record and alongside Nikisha Sales for being twice the defensive player of the year. Just to you how you envisioned her season playing out? Uh, yeah, I think she was ready to, um, you know, to have a mature season. Uh, I think by this point in your career, you know, at, at Connecticut, you know, you have to play, especially when you have the ball in your hands all the time. You know, you have to have a, a certain maturity about you. And, um, you know, you you strip away all the nonsense from freshman year, sophomore year that got you in trouble. And um, and you play, you play solid, but, you know, basketball. And, and I think she's done that for, I would say, you know, the majority of the season. Um, especially this season when there hasn't been a lot of um, a lot of opportunities for somebody to take the pressure off of her handling the ball. Um, so I think she's had a remarkable year. Um, you know, you could, you could say that, you know, she's you know, probably invaluable to our team. Uh, I mean, everybody had to con contribute this year, but I don't think anybody had to contribute more than she did. So, you know, what a, what a wild evolution for her. She, she comes in, like, makes a difference right away because she's feisty. And, yeah. And here she, you don't, you didn't know she'd be running the offense for the better part of two seasons. And yeah. you're talking about her as invaluable, whereas probably when she came here, we were thinking she's kind of complimentary. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And who's to know what, what, what would have been or what could have been, you know. But I do know this freshman year, uh, our team, changed a little bit when we put her in the starting lineup and then last year the exact same thing happened you know she started the season coming off the bench and then we put her in the starting lineup and everything changed so this year you know starting the season like that I think uh, uh, was kind of a message to her that you know, we, we don't have a lot of uh, especially when Paige went out you know, we don't have a lot of options. So there's going to be a lot on your shoulders. And uh, I think she's handled it, you know, remarkably well. She said she's still not the most coachable player. She said that. But how, how far has she come? And, and where is she better in terms of being coached? Um, uh, I, th I think the, the thing you have to be careful with uh, when you have players like like Nika is you don't want to take from them the thing that makes them who they are you know you don't want to take that rambunctiousness you know you don't want to take that feistiness that um, that chip on your shoulder you know wants to fight everybody every day you know you don't want to take that away from them because it's part of their identity but you have to show them how to manage it, how to use it successfully to, to benefit them and our team. Um, that there's, there's going to be times when she has to take the hit for anybody. And she usually does, you know, and that she's not afraid of um, of taking the responsibility, so that that's probably you know listening better, paying attention more, wanting to be a leader. She said, "I'm going to," you know. She told me in the beginning of the season. She said, "My goal was to try to be easy to, easy to coach." I said, "Well, we strive for easier than last year," and so far, you know, she's accomplished that. We talk about, you know, Aubrey's grown a lot in, cons in confidence since, you know, before she went out last year with the back injury. How much do you think that back surgery aided that I'm growth sorry. in confidence? And where do you see that growth in confidence the most in her? Um, well, you see it in spurts, right? You see it in um, defensive possessions where she disrupts the other team. You see it um, in ways that she feels comfortable attacking the basket off the dribble. You see it where she doesn't hesitate to um, to shoot an open shot. Um, I, I, I wish it was there 
but it's way further along than it was. Now the trick is to, you know, how do you keep her in that place where she feels, you know, that I have to be more aggressive as opposed to start out passive and then get aggressive as the game goes on. So that's where the confidence comes in, knowing that even if the game doesn't begin the way you want it to begin or things don't go exactly the way you want them to go at the beginning, you don't change your approach. So that's a sign of confidence, I think. Where is uh, AZ right now? Is it possible she could play in this tournament? Or, and at what point, if not, do you, do you talk to her about maybe shutting it down for the year? Um, well, as I said the other night, um, every day there's more that she's um, capable of doing and there's more that she wants to do. And there's more situations that she puts herself in in practice to keep testing herself and I asked her you know about a month ago I said what's your plans and she said I'm working out every day planning to come back so as I said um, when is she going to feel comfortable um, coming back I mean she she practiced yesterday not the whole practice and didn't do everything but she looked, started looking like her old self that's one day so we'll see we'll see what happens today how long she can go today and whether or not she looks like she's ready to play it's kind of like the situation that Paige was in last year you know you know you want to give it a shot but like you know you want to dive in but the water's cold you know so you put your foot in there a little bit and then you're better off diving in right <laughs> it's never a good thing to walk in slowly you know, you're, you're kind of tough on Nika at times, which you are traditionally with your point guards, right? Like, like you, you uh, put a lot of responsibility on her, and, he, and, it, and it hasn't caused her to, like, lose that. She still but, goes 90 miles an hour and brings the energy, and mm -hmm. that's a credit to her, right? That yeah. She, yeah. She doesn't lose um, the rambunctiousness. Yeah. The, the, the things that make you good, you have to hold on to. It's managing them. It's controlling them rather than they control you. And I believe that that was the case. You know, Nika's emotional makeup hasn't changed. It's she has better control over it. And um, I, I would venture to say that we had, you know, we had about a week this year where she wasn't, she wasn't there, wherever she was. You know, for whatever reason. And the whole team knew it. And she knew it. And you could see the difference in our team when she's like that. When she gets quiet and very much, you know, takes a, a backseat to everybody and lets them do their thing, that's not good. So that, she had one, one week where you know, she was in that place and um, she's not anymore. How much of your turnover problem is the aggressive pace that she wants to play at and how much is it that you just don't have other ball handlers to, to help her or you know people that are running the offense correctly with her to make things run more smoothly? Yeah, the, when you're playing well, um, things just kind of seem to to flow, you know, and people aren't necessarily trying too hard. And they're not um, trying to hit a home run every time they touch the ball. And Nika's still guilty of that, you know. She'll, she'll see a guy down there, but she refuses to see the three guys guarding that guy and thinks that I can get there and puts the kid in jeopardy that she's throwing it to, you know. So you don't have to do that. You know, you could just make that pass to the guy that's wide open on the wing. And it's not going to look as fancy, but it's more effective. Um, and there's some leeway that you might want to give some of the players. But then some of the other players think that I, I can do it too. Or they're stuck with the ball in places where they shouldn't have the ball. Um, especially when... We were going through those stretches where we were playing with three post players. You know, 
Um, I mean, one of the reasons that we've led the country in assists so many times since I've been here is we generally play with a three three guard lineup since 1985, and you know we value ball handlers and we value making good decisions with the ball and. And I've always said, you know, you have to have post players that can catch and can pass, can dribble, make an outside shot. And if you got that, you have a chance to win the national championship. And if you don't have that, you're going to struggle. I don't care how good your guards are. You know, you still need help from your, from your big guys when there's, you know, lots of pressure on your guards. So I would have thought we would get better at it uh, as the season went on, but I think we started to press a little bit and try even harder to make hard plays that it backfires. Always does. Always does. You know, I mean, you know, you, you had Lou a couple times trying to make a play for somebody else. You know, like, if you want to pass the ball, pass it to the rim. If it goes in, it's two points. If one of our guys rebounds it, then that's a good pass. You're coming down here looking like, you know, you want to set the Big East assist record. So people were just trying to do things. That, and they get a little, a little carried away with themselves. Has this been a good week? Uh, or like a fresh start kind of going into the tournament? Like have you gotten a lot done in practice and rested mm. up and <laughs> all the good stuff? Yeah. Um, just trying to fix ourselves, you know, when you're not quite sure what the, you know, when you're in a tournament situation and you're not sure who the opponent is, you really just concentrate on yourself, you know. So today, you know, we now, you know, we know we're playing Georgetown, so we know um, which way that's going to go. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to start preparing, and then we have an early game tomorrow at noon, so no, we're not going to have time tomorrow morning and shoot around to. You know, we're not even going to go to do anything. Um, and generally, you know, no matter what you do, that first game in the Big East tournament is always really lousy. They've played a game. You know, they feel pretty good. They're going to get up tomorrow and be ready to play. And you haven't played in a while. Now you're going out there and and you're supposed to win, you know, and the score's 10-8 at the five-minute mark, you know, and everybody's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So you got to deal with all that, and that's 38 years worth of that. You know it's coming, and you just prepare yourself for it. What are your thoughts kind of on that path you guys had playing? You know, Georgetown, you guys had some close games against them, and, you know, potential matchup with the two teams that you guys in conference play. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Well, you, you expect, you know, um, maybe, you know, every, everybody – Maybe everybody's, you know, surprised that um, that we, you know, we had a lot of close games this year, and um, I'm not one of them. I'm not surprised. Um, you you can't take you can't take who's you can't take our lineup. I said this to somebody the other day. We we haven't played we haven't played one single Big East game this year with our whole lineup. So I'd like to see another team anywhere in the country go through that and not have close games. You got two of the best players in America that haven't played hardly at all this year. So if you can't get close games now, then you know. If you can win your league with two All-Americans sitting on the bench, it doesn't say much about your league, does it? So you have to lose some games. You have to have some close games just to validate the strength of your league. Otherwise, you know, what happens when we get 100% healthy next year? So I'm not surprised. I just sometimes I'm surprised at some of the things that we do, but the fact that the games are close no. I mean, so it's good. We played Georgetown. We had two close games with them. People forget we were up 28 at the XL Center, I believe. 24, 26, like in the fourth quarter. 
we subbed everybody out and it ended up being whatever it was. And then, you know, we were coming right off the Marquette game, playing at, at Georgetown. So, whatever kind of game it is, you just gotta figure out a way to win it. If it's a triple overtime game, you gotta figure out a way to win it. If it's a blowout, then you just, you know, are shocked that it's that easy. But you gotta be ready for just about anything come to one time. You tested the way you guys have with, you know, like you said, not having those star players still being able to win the league, being able to pull out a lot of, you know, close games. How does that help you now going into the postseason that they've been in those types of situations? Well, a lot of our guys have had to make big free throws the last month. They've had to make some big jump shots, right? We've had to get some big stops and big moments. Uh, we've had to guard two of the best players in the country. Um, so a lot, you know, we've had to execute, you know, in the last minute of games. So, you know, um, I think we're probably like 99.9% .9 of every team in America. Because every team's probably experienced that this year. If they play in any kind of competition. It's just that that hasn't happened around here in so long. That it's a shock to everybody's system, you know. But not mine. You, you've had Diana and Stewie put up with getting beat up mm -hmm. all season long and then have great postseasons. But those are iconic players. Mm -hmm. can, can Lou battle back from all the you know, physicality that she's dealt with and be fresh for the postseason or reinvigorated or you see um, something in her? But yeah, she's not going to, um, you know, she's not going to stop uh, being who she is. We have to give her a little bit more help. You know, that's the key. Um, and if, you know, if Caroline can play more and be Caroline and, you know, not the aberration that Caroline won for 11. You know, if Caroline can be Caroline, then that's more shots going in from that side of the court. And that helps Lou. But, you know, you have to expect that. When you're as good a scorer as Lou is, you have to expect that. Uh, you don't, you, you don't, throw in the towel just because people won't let you move. I mean, that's up to the officials to do that. You know, that's, um, that's nothing that I can control. That's nothing that Lou can control. It's up to us. We have to help her get open a little bit. She has to help herself get open a little bit better. And the officials have to enforce the rules. Whatever those rules are, they need to be enforced. If the rule says, you can do anything you want to a kid who's trying to get open, then those are the rules. And next year, it'll be really, really hard to get a shot against us. Do, do you like seeing her feistiness? I mean, I think we were all a little bit shocked when she started going after the kid the <laughs> other night. Uh, is that just show you that she isn't giving up, that she has that yeah. feistiness no. in her? No, no, we were, Morgan and I were just talking about this that uh, her and um, Nika, the two of them, probably are the two that have that in them. And it's, you know, it's always on the surface. It doesn't always come out in Lou as easily as it does in Nika. But it's there. You know, she's a competitive kid and, and you can see by some of the big, the big buckets that she makes, you know. And it's not even like how many points she scores. You know, you think about it. Lou came into our situation here, and she, she's had one bad game, correct? I think she had a lousy game at Georgetown. She fouled out. I don't know that she's played another lousy game. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the St. John's game? I don't know. But it's hard for me to think about how many bad games she's played. So she's not going to stop playing. That's for sure. The problem is, because of all the, the nicks and knacks and all the, she hasn't been able to practice as much.
So when you don't practice much, you're not out there. You're not shooting as much. You're not involved as much, you know? And so your timing is off and all that. So hopefully, get back into some kind of routine you with her. You've mentioned that inconsistencies are kind of this, the biggest, weakest point right now on your team on Monday. Is that fixable before the postseason when all these games now are win or go home? Fix what? What were you saying? Is being consistent, is that fixable? Oh. Is being consistent fixable? Inconsistent. Being Is it being inconsistent fixable? No. That's not. Because over, you have enough, you have enough material to look back and go, here's who they are after 31 games. So that's who we are. We're not going to all of a sudden change in two games. You know, we just got to minimize the, the times when it goes the other way. But to keep it from going the other way, that ain't going to happen. Now, you know, if we play an RA game, you know, and everybody's in the groove, yeah. But it's a big difference when we were playing, really playing, and getting 85 points a game, and then you're getting in the 60s. So if we can get back into the 80s, then, then we got a shot. I seem to remember you always talking very fondly about Terry Holland. Mm. Just any remembrances of him, any, you know, from your bit days in Virginia, you know, any kind of influence or impact he might have had on you that has lasted? I don't know who gave him this nickname, but I think Seth Greenberg. Um, we were down there and he was a, a GA on the men's staff. And uh, he was the big whistle. You know, and not just because he's, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, whatever he was. Um, but um, he just um, he just had a way about him, you know. Um, he, he was like your your favorite teacher, but very stern. And he was your favorite uncle. And he was, you know, the kind of guy that um, always had a good word for everybody and always treated people the right way. And was a hell of a coach and in a conference full of Hall of Fame coaches. Um, and he treated me, you know, exceptionally well. And he allowed me access to his program anytime I wanted it. You know, he allowed me to go to every single thing, go to practice, go up and sit in the office, go to listen to them in staff meetings. You know, he gave me access to everything. And I never forgot that. And I always appreciate what I learned being allowed to hang around those guys for uh, for four years. It was probably the greatest four years of my life in terms of an education of learning how to, how to coach basketball at a real high level and how to manage all the things that go into, you know, having that kind of program with that kind of profile. I mean, I don't think we were at all alike. He would never lose his composure, you know. But just a throwback, man, to when coaches just coached for the love of the game. How was how Dorka looking? How's Dorka? Mm -hmm. um, good. She went through half our workout yesterday, and I think she's going to do a little more today. Um, but, you know, she's had four or five days of rehab, so I'm, I'm hoping, planning on, that she's going to be good to go. But, you know, three games in three days, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Um, and now Yana's walking around in there with a mask because she's got a stomach bug, and... We're trying to keep her away from everybody else. So it's, it's never ending, man. You mentioned on Monday wanting to, you know, see an improvement with the team's, um, you know, communication, especially on defense. Have you, you know, seen a difference there in practice this week? 
Uh, comes and goes. Comes and goes. Um, I think it'll be better tomorrow than it was Monday night, for sure. Much better than it was Monday night. Um, and, and I, you know, you guys talk to the players in here. You know, I, th I think they they understand what's at stake. You know, right now there's two games left of the season, maybe, or there's nine, and anywhere in between two and nine. So I don't think this is the time when I have to ask them to, for the fifth time. You know. Uh, so I think it'll be better. It'll be much better Friday night, um, Saturday morning at noon than it was Friday night. Much better.